있어요 So apologies in advance for any like cave-in anxiety nightmares that that may have caused. Uh, yeah, that is a trailer for a Korean horror movie that was put together by myself and my pal Dave Clark that just premiered at a international film festival in Korea. So we're gonna go through a full breakdown on the project because I, I just think I think it's pretty wild. Okay, let's dive in. So probably the craziest part about this whole thing is that. The production for this was done, I would say like 80% via text message. The whole thing started when Dave, who you might remember from his hybrid AI live action short film, Another, mentioned that he was going to the Buchan International Fantastic Film Festival to be part of their AI conference. Dave mentioned that he was thinking about creating something to showcase there, and we literally just started working on it on the spot. And what's crazy is that was just a couple of days ago. Uh, I'll talk about how fast everything went in just a minute. Blow Bang Hua is loosely based on the true story of two South Korean miners who got trapped in a cave-in and survived for nine days, basically living off of coffee. You might remember that news story. I mean, I certainly do, namely because when I saw that headline, I thought to myself, I don't see a problem here. And that is when I realized I have a problem. Jokes aside, it was probably super terrifying for them. So we decided to make things worse for our miners by putting a Bugasol down there as well. The Bugasol is a Korean folk monster that is literally impossible to kill by miners. It also eats metal, which is just like super hardcore. Toolset wise, we pretty much used everything that we had access to. Uh, the majority of it is obviously image to video. Those images were initially generated in Midjourney and then given an upscale in Magnific. From there, we utilized both Kling and Luma Labs Dream Factory. Uh, and because like literally just a few days ago, Gen 3 dropped, we added in some Gen 3 shots as well. We'll take a look at what is what in just a minute. But I mean, overall, I think the craziest aspect of this is that I think total production on this thing was about nine hours. So we obviously did lean pretty hard on Kling here. Although this second shot here is a Gen 3 shot. And then interestingly, we weren't actually able to generate the Bulgasi in Kling. We actually ended up with a like a content to, too scary warning, basically. That said, Luma Labs Dream Factory apparently was not scared of that monster. And since they have just rolled out a new feature allowing for keyframes, we we're actually able to pull this shot off where, uh, you know, we have our minor guy turn and then see the monster. That said, as long as the monster was shrouded in shadows, Kling did not seem to have a problem with it. The footage also went through some post effects as well. Uh, this is Dave's timeline. He apologizes for its sloppiness. I don't see slop here. This is just looks like one of my normal timelines. Listen, I know there's probably a Pinterest board dedicated to super aesthetic timelines. Who has time for that? So first off, all of the footage was taken through Topaz for an upscale, where ironically it was cleaned up only to be then taken through Film Convert to add, you know, grain and scratch to it. Uh, and then ultimately Dave popped some VHS distortion on there as well to give it that found footage look. Voices were done in 11 labs utilizing the multilingual support. I'll tell you in a minute how we actually double checked that translation. And 11 labs also handled a pretty good amount of the audio special effects uh, for the kind of pulsing eerie horror music that was Udio. The premiere really annihilated. Dave did like four hours of press after that and a Gen 3 workshop. Yeah, he gets to do all the fun stuff like travel around like an international man of mystery. I am here in Studio A. 
But Below Bang Hua is already starting to get bites from a number of prominent producers. So I don't know, fingers crossed, maybe you'll see it as a little tile on one of the streaming services. Oh, and as far as the accuracy on the Eleven Labs Korean translations, uh, that was actually Dave's mom that served as our expert translator. And that's kind of the thing that ends up tickling me the most about all of this. This is an AI generated Korean horror film that was created by two Americans, uh, one half black and half Korean, the other half white and half Japanese. I'll let you figure out which one of us is which, utilizing software from China, Poland, the US, and Spain. I mean, there's always that thing about like cold faceless AI, when in reality, it's people using tools created by other people all around the world. Ultimately, I do think that collaboration is the way forward for all of us. I mean, the tools move so quickly and obviously subscription costs across all of them get very high. So let me know in the comments if you'd be interested in kind of a community hub. Uh, nothing to announce yet. It's just an idea that I'm playing around with. I just wanted to see if there was any interest from all of you first. And on that note, I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.